Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. Folks from our fisheries division are here at Broken Bow Lake today, stocking Florida largemouth bass that were cultured and raised to fingerling size at our Durant State Fish Hatchery. Now, it's well known that Florida largemouth bass grow faster and bigger than their cousin, the northern largemouth bass. In fact, all of the fish on the top 20 biggest bass list in Oklahoma that were tested were the Florida species. And the number two bass on that list was from right here out of Broken Bow Lake. So who knows, maybe one of these fingerlings being stocked today could one day grow up and make that top 20 list too. The opportunity to fish for giant largemouth bass here. Just another reason to love Oklahoma and the adventures that await you. As far as back as I can remember, my dad took me pond fishing and it's been my most favorite ever since. Um, it's one of the memories that I have of me and my dad fishing and uh, I prefer pond fishing over lake fishing, stream fishing. It's, it's by far my favorite. Knowing the family likes to fish and be together means the world to me. Um, there, there are so many families out there that the kids stay in the room locked up to, and hooked up to video games or laptop computers and the parents don't really know what the kids are doing. The kids really don't care what the parents are doing in most instances. And at least this, we can stay together as a family. Um, it, to me, it just makes us grow stronger and tighter together. As a mom, I value anything and any time that we get to spend together. So when it comes to fishing or movies or cookouts or whatever, it's nice to have everybody together. Your entire family to be together all at the same time is very, very rare. So for us to do this is, is very special. Well, my oldest child, Trenton, he graduated two years ago from high school and then he enlisted in the uh, Army National Guard. He's been home and away and home and away, you know, these, this, this past year, uh, doing his training, doing his duty, and then coming back home and trying to adjust to, from civilian to military life in a flip of a switch. So that's been very interesting and uh, nerve-wracking at the same time. I've always wanted to join and serve the country and do that and being a soldier, I don't know, being a hero to everybody, I guess. Can be a little scary. Okay, I'm going this way. I'm just glad he's home. We tried to cherish every second that we had him home. At a moment's notice, he could be called away called to duty, so the time that we have him at our house, we try to spend as much time as we can. Having a soldier son is, is kind of a mixed bag of emotions. On one hand, you're extremely proud of, of the choices he's made 
And so then that turns to the other side of the, of the coin where you're just a nervous wreck, you know, worrying sick about him every second, you know, that he's gone. Is he, is he going to get called away? Is he going to be in harm's way? So as a parent, you worry about him, but in the same tone, you're really proud of him. Do we do want to have a race back to shore? Whoever, whoever wins doesn't have to do dishes this week. Doesn't have to do dishes? Doesn't have to. Okay. Sounds like a deal. Ready? Ready? Set. Go. My name is Derricka Smith. I live in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. When I was 10 years old, I decided to go hunting and I got my own deer and I decided I wanted to go hunting more so I decided to look into archery. Every night I went around the house with a hat and I asked people to donate to my bow fund but obviously that wasn't going to get me $700. One day I went with dad on a car ride for some errands and I brought a notebook and I brainstormed for some ideas and I came up with a dog wash. Well, we made flyers, we went around giving them to people, putting them on doors, and pretty much when we went around, we knocked on one door, the whole neighborhood started barking up, so we knew which houses had dogs or not. I'm extremely proud of my daughter because she's a very outgoing person. She likes people. She loves dogs. So to be able to put that together, yes, I was extremely proud of her. As well as the dog wash, I also did chores around the house, sweep floors, clean the sinks. She would do back rubs for people. She would do extra chores around the house that weren't her regular chores, sweeping floors or cleaning bathrooms or sweeping the porch or helping her dad do the vending machines. We have a vending business, so she would go with him. Not her favorite thing, but if it meant money in her bow fund, she would go do it and just look for all kinds of ways to be able to get money to eventually be able to buy her bow. I made an exercise with a little piece of wood and exercise bars and I just, every night, I exercised. I tried to get up to poundage because we had to get up to 40 pounds and I started at 25. I, I mean like almost every day when I knew that I got a little bit of money I went and I counted and I counted. And then when we decided to get the count and pound bow, we figured, we saw that we had enough money. I'm like, and I just was bouncing off the walls. It was a year and a half to help me get my bow. Um, we only did one fundraiser, but they just helped me out a lot. She's learned a lot in just life. She was 10 years old when this whole thing started. She's learned a lot in the last two years of, of being able to be responsible, to learn how to do business, to respect what she has done, uh, to learn how to save money, to not touch the money that she has saved. 
uh, to be able to be diligent into them. When she got the bow, she had to be diligent in shooting that bow to be able to not only bring her poundage up, but to be able to hit the target at the distance that she has. And we're going into this and at 20 yards, she is very accurate with her bow. And I am extremely proud of her. It's also learned that setting a goal and working towards it is a great thing, not always easy from the start to the finish, but worth it and, and worth pursuing and, and meeting that goal feels really good when you get there. I, I've learned responsibility. Everyone's telling me how proud they are, but I think I'm pretty much the proudest one of me. The happiest little 11 year old alive. We only did one dog wash for my bow, but then we decided to make it an annual thing and we did one for my friend who was battling cancer. And she had found out about a young lady that was um, fighting a battle with cancer and she was 21 at the time and she said, I want to be able to help her. I didn't even know her when I did the dog wash, but we raised a thousand dollars. So all the money from the second dog wash went to bless that family. quite a bunch of bass in this pond. Mm -hmm. We hadn't ever fished in this pond. Mm -hmm. Heard a lot about it. I haven't seen anything. I don't, it's the first time to ever fish. It's like it's a pretty nice pond. It's good and clear. It's got nice bass in it. Yeah, it's got some pretty good sized bass in it. Got some big ones in it too. Yeah. I mean, that one hit right at the edge of the water. Yeah, I've had two do that to me. Kind of unexpected. It, I mean, it took it, hit it hard. As soon as it hit it, started running with it. Oh, just missed one, Ty. Yeah. Amy. Just missed a Ooh. I'm up in this tree here. It's a big one, man. Gosh. God, come on in, man. Come on. You're the biggest fish I've ever saw in my life. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Ty, look at the size of this fish. Look at this fish. Look at this fish. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, oh, 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 it's a big one, oh my gosh, oh, 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 it's big, it's big, oh my gosh, stop, stop, don't go in, oh man, oh, oh man, oh my gosh, this is the biggest fish I've ever saw in my life. Oh my gosh. This is a big fish. Can I keep him? Please. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Man, he hit and I couldn't get him in. He was just, he was fighting bad. He's about five, man. He's got to be. We got another big one, man. Oh, no, that ain't as big as that last one. Why do you keep catching? Why are you sticking with this? I'm staying with this one. Let's do 
one more cast and let's head on home, okay? Let's go we'll get us some dinner. I'm getting, I'm getting hungry. Some baseball practice wore me out. Okay. Yeah. That sure was a nice fish you caught today, Zach. Thanks, man. You caught a nice one, too, man. That was a big old fish that you caught. I know. Hey, me and you, we least caught two big ones. Okay, last cast. Hey, let me help. I don't want to leave. I mean, big bugs. Yeah, you too. When do you think we can come back to this pond? I don't know. But maybe we can talk them into coming back someday. Yeah, that's a nice pond, man. Yeah, maybe we can talk them, talk them into bringing us back tomorrow. Yeah. Alright, so we're out here at one of our first spots here. We're going to try to locate a big paddlefish. Once we've located this big paddlefish, we're going to go after it and we're going to catch her. Once we've caught her, I'm going to demonstrate real quickly on a real quick catch and release method to handle these fish and get them back into the water safely. That is crucial to the survival of these fish and to make sure that Keystone Lake or any other lake that has paddlefish continues this great fishery the Oklahoma Wildlife Department has made it. Tight, 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 that a boy, good. Good, good job, Brody. Good job, buddy. You have to use a barbless hook. You're not allowed to have barbs on these hooks. We're using anywhere from two and a half to six ounce weights, depending on how the fish are reacting from one day to the next. And the biggest thing is, is to keep that line tied at all times because you've got a massive weight pulling down on a barbless hook. So if these fish get slack, that hook slides right out of them. I'm gonna actually help him out now. That fish took a lot of line. We're actually gonna chase it down. On the bigger fish, when I know they're over 100 pounds, keep that rod tip up, buddy. Keep it up and reel. If I know that the fish are over 100 pounds, I will, most of the time, I will chase down, I'll chase them down with the trolling motor. There's two reasons I like to do that. One and one that's real important to me is that by fighting that fish all the way from 80 yards out to 100 yards out, all the way back to the boat, it puts a lot of unwanted stress on that fish. The odds of survival obviously go down. These are very hardy fish, but anything you could do to help that stress of that fish out really goes a long way for these fish, especially during the summertime. The other part of that is if it does get fortunate enough to get away from us, I like the opportunity to maybe find that fish again. So I'll stay up on it with the trolling motor for those two reasons right there. Always be prepared to get that fish on board, have your scales ready, have your phones ready to take some really quick pictures. If you're gonna bring it aboard, make it quick, get that fish back in the water as fast as you can. Rod tip up, come on buddy, put that rod to work. Good, good. So that fish is gonna be in the 70 pound range there. I try to keep my uh, out of water time to about a minute. If we can keep it under a minute, especially when it's hot, we've done it right. And, and a big part of that is just being prepared. When you bring it aboard, just be ready and prepared. So at this point, at this point, you want to keep a little pressure on that line. And these fish have a tendency to take off if I don't get them this first time. So I'm going to have him keep pressure on that line. Just like that. There she goes. We're going to keep it right here. All right, buddy. Let's try this again. And we got her that time. We got her that time. And that's how easy that hook pops out. It just comes right out just like that because it's barbless. 
what we're going to do now is I'm going to bring her to the back of the boat and we're going to go ahead and get our scales ready. So he's going to get his scales and this is a good point. Leave them in the water. Let them recover a little bit here. We're going to get our scale on. We're going to make sure it's in the right unit. And this is a good point if you're going to take pictures to go ahead and have your phones ready. Have it in camera mode. That way when we get this fish on board, we're going to have her out as little as we possibly can. We'll get a quick wait, take a couple quick pictures, get them right back in the water. You're going to see that whenever we release this fish, the best thing to do is to take them and a nose dive straight in. You don't want them landing on their sides or on their belly. You just want to kind of get their nose pointing straight down. That way they get a good release, get back into the water. 99% of the time these fish swim off just fine. But if you ever see that fish up, it could be one of two things. It went under a lot of stress and it's still a little stressed out or its air bladder could be full. What you're gonna see when I pull this fish in, I give it just a second on the side of the boat and it's gonna put pressure on its belly and you're gonna hear the air come out of this fish. By allowing that air to come out of that fish, it's gonna allow her to go back down to the depths of the water. So here we go. He's got the scale ready. This is the part where I kind of burp them a little bit. Come up. Sometimes you hear them burp, sometimes you don't, but I'll leave them right there for a second. This fish is actually gonna be in the 80 pound range. So I'm gonna bring her aboard. We're gonna work real quick here. I'm gonna have my rope ready to go for another girth wrap right here around the rostrum. I'm gonna come up over the top. I'm gonna take our scale. She's in the 80s. I'm gonna get a quick weight. 86. 86 pounds. So we got an 86 pound. I'm gonna hand him a scale. At this point, I would lift this fish up, hand it to somebody from this position. I just lift it up into their arms. They're gonna cradle it, take a few good pictures, release her back in. But for right now, we're not gonna take any pictures. So we're just gonna get this 86 pound fish back into the water. So I'll release her. She's coming off the edge. Remember, you want head first. And there she goes. And that's how it's done. Good job. Well, we hope that today's stories remind you that Oklahoma is such a great state to explore. So however you choose to enjoy our state's incredible natural world, remember that your adventure starts with Outdoor Oklahoma. Good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Outdoor Oklahoma is produced by the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation and is proud to serve and be funded entirely by sportsmen and women and outdoor enthusiasts who love and appreciate all things wild in the great state of Oklahoma.